Okay. All right. So we're recording. I am Dr. Kim Godwin. I am an instructional designer with MTSU Online, and we are doing this presentation in partnership with the LTN ITC to talk to you all a little bit about Video Note. Video Note is uh, one of the many, many tools that are available in D2L that can really help with the overall engagement you have with your students. Uh, and it's right there in D2L. You don't have to go out to any other resources. You don't have to go do other stuff with it. It's just right there. So it's just an opportunity for you to see how you use it, give you some information about ways you might want to use it, uh, both for you and for your students, um, and then talk to you a little bit about why it is that it's important to have activities like video note and things like that within your courses to engage with your students and for them to engage with each other. Uh, before we get too far into that, I didn't want to uh, point out that um, the other two instructional designers from MTSU Online are also here. Uh, Tara and Karen are here to answer questions. Uh, they are going to be helping us out in the chat because they are awesome at that. Um, and then I don't have to try to keep up and they interrupt me and make me answer the questions that people have, which is fantastic because I just breeze right on through and totally forget. So it is fantastic that they are here to help us do that. Um, and then I also wanted to make sure that y'all are keeping up with the events calendar through the LTN ITC. Uh, there are several events coming up uh, in the next couple of weeks, um, a couple of them are even tomorrow, and then they are the rest of this week, and then even more next week, and on through. Um, Sheila and everybody over there does such a great job of scheduling events out that really meet the needs of faculty um, and really supporting y'all in your training and development. So thank you, Sheila, for partnering with us and giving us the opportunity. And thank you for providing so many great examples um, for people to get engaged with, to help promote their own teaching and learning opportunities. So thank you for that. Uh, and you can get to that from the LTN IT website, L T and ITC website um, or the mtsu.edu slash online slash faculty. We also have it. Um, that calendar is also on our website. So um, check that out. And just self-promoting, there's one coming up on September 20th that Tara will be leading on H5P, which is the super awesome, coolest thing ever engagement uh, integration tool within D2L. So we're super excited to show that to y'all. Um, and we can talk to you about it before then, but we know y'all are really, really busy um, with the start of the semester. So in three weeks, don't forget to come back because we'll be at that one. Um, okay, so now we'll just go ahead and get started on um, a little bit about video note uh, and some information and background about what that is and, and why we think it's so important. So. I, um, I like to talk a little bit about uh, the, the theory behind things. I like to lay a little bit of foundation and some of the tools and things that we talk about. I know in the last presentation we did last week, we didn't do that because it was solely for the purpose of these are the five and a half things that happened over the summer that we really needed to get you some really, this is how to do it information and then move on. Um, but this one, I really do want to talk to you a little bit about that. So um, for me, where I see some video note really playing in and theory really supporting the use of video note is social constructivism. I am a social constructivist. Um, I own it. Um, it's totally fine. There's worse things I could be. Um, and really what that is, is that I really do think that the engagement that we get from each other and the things that we learn from each other have as much of an impact on our learning as anything that we do on our own and probably more because everybody outside of us gives us an additional perspective. They give us a new way of seeing, they give us a new way of knowing. Every one of us in this session right now sees things differently than every one of us. We all have that coming into it. So we learn so much more from each other and from those individual interactions and engagements. And that's how we really do create meaning in the things that we learn about and the things that we know is how those interactions happen and how those connect with us and move us to the next level. Um, we can go way into that if y'all want to. I would encourage you to go read a little bit about social constructivism um, and what it means and where it comes from. It touches on things like pushing us onto the next level, um, you know, hitting your zone of proximal development 
scaffolding your activities. So we're constantly growing and, and we're taking things from here and we're taking them to the next level and we're taking them to the next level. And you'll see that within some of the things that we talk about within video note about how we start here, um, but that we can take something very basic with use of video note and create much more involved and engaged opportunities for our students um, through the use of one small thing. Um, so that's one of the ones I see it. I also see it a lot through, through motivation. Um, and so we can, we can talk a little bit about um, motivation theory and, and those concepts with that. But the general gist of that is our students and we uh, tend to work a little bit harder at something if we feel connected to it. Um, if we know that we're going to be rewarded in some way, if we know that we're going to gain some awareness in some way, if we know we're going to be able to be a little more creative about things, we tend to be a little bit more motivated in how it is that we do those activities and engage in those activities. It's about making some of those connections with things that we'll do later in life. So thinking about that in terms of as we start talking about some activities for uh, ways that you could use video note. We do not live in a, a vacuum and we do not work in a vacuum. We are constantly and always working with other people, engaging with other people. I, right now I'm engaging with all of y'all um, and you are constantly engaging with your students through your courses. How are you making those connections with them? How are you motivating them to stay engaged in their activities? How are you helping them see that what it is that they're learning and doing in their class will impact them as they go forward to the next later in this class or into the next class or on into their careers when they graduate how are we motivating them to stay connected um, so that's a little bit about where i see some video note with that because we are going to be communicating with people when we get out in the real world uh, we are going to be communicating whether that be through video note or someday the global pandemic gets to the point that we can all be in a room together. People might actually start communicating again face to face. And so video note is actually a pretty safe way to practice that because um, if you don't like it, you can delete it and then start all over, um, which we can't do in real life. Um, we, we just, it is what it is. Um, so with video note, you really can kind of start over. Uh, so those are a couple of the foundational reasons behind why I think it's so important to learn how to use video note and engage with video note is because of that um, and and connecting with those things and helping our students create those levels of connection with each other and with us um, it kind of steps into the community of inquiry too but I know we cover that one a lot so um, I really wanted to talk about it in terms of a couple of the other um, areas that I think it really touches on and why it's important um, so I'm going to show y'all very quickly how to use video note um, and show you some examples of it. Um, and then we're gonna talk a little bit about what are some different ways that you would be able to use it in your classes. So um, for those of you, this is the first time you've been in a presentation with me. This is the part where I tell you it's okay to minimize us down in the corner and turn on your own D2L and walk through it with us. Um, but if you only have one camera, you're gonna need to turn off your camera if you're gonna try to do it with us. Um, if you're actually gonna try to hit record because you are you have to have a camera to make video note work. So, um, so if you're gonna do that, that's great. But I do encourage you to at least walk through some of those steps with us. So feel free to minimize, um, stick us down in that corner so that uh, you can walk right along with me through the process. Okay, so um, here we are on our um, screen. I hope everybody can see this screen. Okay. Um, it's, hey, it happens to be our MTSU online faculty services page. So yay, go us. Um, so this is, this is where I can't find my mouse. So this is my, one of my development shells. It's one of the places that I go in and I play and I create. Um, and I do things and attest things. So um, I'm gonna use this as the one that is my example space to show you how to create a video note. And y'all will notice, cause I did just tell y'all about two different cameras. One of my cameras is on my laptop. One is on top of my monitor. So you're gonna get two different perspectives of me, which might be a little interesting, uh, but it'll make sense in a second when you see it. So in order to create a video note, you literally go anywhere in D2L that has a text box. Um, and so to 
to get to TextBox, it's anything that is a news item um, in your widgets when you are in the um, edit part of widgets. Um, anywhere up here, like where it says instructions will be included, when you click on that, that is a text box. It's anywhere that has all of the stuff up, up at the top um, about fonts and um, inserting things and formatting and things like that. Those are text boxes. So you can get to those from anywhere anywhere in D2L actually. Um, there, every description, every instruction box, um, every forum, every topic, every thread in a discussion, all of those places are description boxes. So I'm gonna show you briefly how you would create a video note. Um, so one of the things that happened with D2L over the summer, um, and this was, it's not a huge change, but if you were used to using video note previously, the button used to be right here and it looked like the little YouTube play button. It's now the button that's way over here in the middle. And it says insert stuff and it's play, pause, record, stop are what those little symbols mean. Uh, so it's the insert stuff button is the one that you're gonna want to use to create a video note. So we'll click on the insert stuff button. Our little box pops up and then we're gonna go to add video note. Now mine is gonna be a little different than yours if you have never used this before. Uh, when I click on it, it's gonna automatically pop up and show me this. So I told you there's two screens. It's, a little, it's like a weird, you've got me facing one way and face another way. Um, so it will automatically pop up into this box if you have used video note before. If you have not, you're gonna to wanna to check around all of your screen and see where the allow button is. Um, or the um, allow this pop up because the very first time that you use video note, it there's a blocker on it for security. Uh, so you need to accept that your camera can be used by D2L. So see if you can find that allow button. Um, it may just be up in the top right corner of your address bar um, that it would say, um, that this page was blocked or pop up was blocked. So kind of look around for that and make sure that you have that. If you're having a hard time figuring out how to get it to turn off, pop a message into the chat and we'll see what we can do to help you. Um, but make sure that you accept it because if you haven't accepted it, it's not gonna work. Now here's the second thing on that. If you tried to do it and you're on a Macintosh or an Apple product and you opened your Safari, it's not going to work. Safari has some intense, intense security settings that make it um, pretty difficult. Uh, you could probably go in through the back end settings, like if you if you know how to get to all of those in the settings of your overall computer to allow it in. So if you have an Apple product, um, a Mac or any kind of iProduct, I would actually encourage you to open it in Chrome or Firefox because it will work with either of those, uh, but it will not work with Safari. So just kind of know that going into it. In the instructions that we will share with you all that you can share in your classes, uh, we talk about that Safari doesn't work and here's how you do it. Um, but that's the big thing is it doesn't work in Safari um, and make sure that you accept the camera. If you don't accept the camera, it's gonna tell you it doesn't work. Um, so. Those are the little tips that I wanted to tell you on that. So now that we have accepted it and now we know it's going to work, um, the way that you create a video note is, I, I know y'all can see this little screen, um, is that you click the new recording and it starts right away. So know that, be prepared that it's gonna start right away. It's gonna listen to you, it's gonna record you, it starts almost instantly. So it's not like some things like in Zoom, when you turn it on, you can wait until the last second and then hit record. And this one, the second you start new recording, it starts recording. After you've recorded however much you wanna say, you simply click stop recording. And then it will actually auto play back for you right away. It, it's pretty immediate too. So we can play it and then it, you get some weird sound effects because it's my microphone and my screen and all that fun stuff. Or you can just get an awesome pause effect um, and the great facial expressions that I make um, so that you can really enjoy what is the essence of me and the facial expressions and all of the videos I do, which really does lead to that motivation thing we were talking about because we learn a lot about 
what people are thinking and saying from tone and inflection and their facial expressions. So that helps a lot too, if we are wanting to motivate students and connecting with each other and connecting with us, seeing us being very real really does make a big difference with that. So I think that this recording is absolutely fantastic and I'm gonna keep it and it's the one that I'm gonna post in my class. So I'm gonna hit next. And then I'm gonna give it a title. And then you can add a description if you need to or want to, that is really up to you. You can then turn on your auto caption. Um, I would suggest English. Um, unless you are in a foreign language class and you are intentionally not using English, um, in which case you can choose whichever language you want. And then you can automatic, automatically generate captions from the audio. So here's the thing to know about the captions in this. They're not great. Um, like on a scale, we've got like, you type it yourself, YouTube, Panopto several other options and then video note it's 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 pretty far down there um it's not great so i i tell you that um because it needs to be captioned for accessibility purposes however um it's not great so this is the time where i also tell you did you notice that um, when we first hit the recording it had a time span of up to 30 minutes so what I'm, what I'm saying on that is since we, um, the auto captioning is not great, um, what you want to think about with that is what are you using video note for uh, and why are we using the video note feature as opposed to some others that might have some better accessibility captioning options. So thinking about that in terms of a video note, kind of start processing that in the back of your mind. Um, so as you saw, I pushed next. And then I'm going to push insert. It says that my file is still being transformed. That's fine. Um, you can go ahead and insert it. Um, and then there it is. It shows up right there in that text box. You can then at that point type um, or do anything. Add any extra information that you want about the video note into that same text box, or you can just have the video there all by itself. You click update. It now is an embedded video. Um, and it now is just sitting there in in that space. So if we go back to um, our our module and then we click on our activities and assessments, it now has a video up there instead of just words. Out of curiosity, is anyone more drawn to something that has a picture or a video? or sound or anything like that than just words. Most of us are. Um, we are more likely to click the little arrow button over my face than we are to read the five words of text that were above it, The or seven, because math, um, the seven words of text that were above it. We'll see that, but we'll see it. And then we'll be like, oh, there's a video. And we'll click the video and we'll play the video because we're naturally drawn to that. That's just who we are. I blame television, um, but you can blame anything you want. But we really are more drawn to that. Um, or maybe we should blame TikTok. Um, but who doesn't love TikTok, right? Uh, so that is something to think about as you're thinking about using video notes and how you might use video notes and how you're going to engage with your students. They are more likely to do something that has a video in it than they are something that's just text. Um, so before we talk about ways that we might use video note, um, does any, and, and I turn off my screen share, um, are there any other uh, questions that y'all have about how to use video notes? Yeah. Yes. Is, is the maximum time 30 minutes for max, video notes? Maximum time is 30 minutes. Okay. Yes. So it's, it's not necessarily your go-to for lecture capture. Um, and that's partially because it is capped at 30 minutes, but also because you don't have a lot of control over the auto captioning. Um, and so it, it could create a lot more work for you um, um, if you use it as your lecture capture. Yes. I had a question, Kim. Now, Panopto versus video note. What would be the benefit of using video note instead of Panopto? 
depends on what you're using it for. Um, and we'll talk about that a little bit more in a second. But the biggest, the biggest difference with video node is what you just saw with video node is what you get. Um, you cannot share your screen. You cannot um, bring in all those other things that you would be able to do with Panopto. This really is intended to be a quick engagement. Hey, here's a little introduction. Hey, here's some information about this week. I wanted to give you a couple of, of quick points on this activity that's coming up because students typically get caught in this space. It's the kind of thing that um, when you have a three to five minutes, um, maybe if it's something a little more involved, 10 to 12. Um, the 30 minutes, if you've got something that's 30 minutes, you probably want to use Panopto or Zoom or Camtasia or Screencastify or Screencastomatic or any of the other things that are out there um, instead of Video Note because it is limited in what its capabilities are. Um, so it really does depend on what you're planning to use it for. What other questions do y'all have before I go further into, and I left my screen share on in case somebody needed me to show them something again, but I'm going to turn it off now uh, so that we can actually have more of a conversation about um, ways that you would use it. Um, so I mentioned a couple of them while we were just chatting. Uh, so I wanted to go over some of those again, and then if y'all can kind of start thinking about things that you do in your own classes um, or ways that you think you might be able to use it, maybe we can come up with some, a pretty awesome list that we can add to some of our resources as ways that people use these. Um, so one of, the, one of the great ways to use this, um, as I mentioned, is like quick updates and notes. So whether that be your um, introduction to a, a new module or a weekly update or um, an announcement about upcoming due dates or something like that. Quick announcements, things that are like one to two minutes that you just wanna pop that into your news instead of typing it all out. Um, so instead of sitting there and typing out all those big news announcements, you really can't just get in there and just say that, hey, don't forget everything's due on Saturday or hey, don't forget this is coming up or as we're getting ready to start this next module, here's some things to be on the lookout for make sure you do this, this, and this before you do this other thing. So that you're kind of giving people just a quick, just a little peek into what's coming because you've probably got some other things in your class that are a little bit more involved and a little bit more engaged um, in terms of the overall, how you're, you're doing learning materials in your class. The video note is there to give you that quick introduction, that quick little snippet um, of what's happening and what's coming up. Um, one of the other ways that I think, um, and this is actually a way that I use it um, in every class that I teach, uh, and I encourage it, and I think every class that I work with people on as an instructional designer, um, in, in that, I, um, I use it as an um, introduction discussion. Um, so when you go into the introduction discussions, um, when you go into introduction discussions and you go into those activities and things like that, um, it gives students a chance to show you who they are um, and see you and engage with you and really have that interaction with you. Um, typically speaking, my students don't like it when I first tell them that they have to do it they're very mad um, because I'm making them do this thing that they every other class they literally probably just copied and pasted the same introduction discussion from every other class they've ever been in um, and I make them do a video and I tell them they've got to keep it under five minutes and here are the things that they have to talk about it's short it kind of gets to the point of things but they get to see and hear each other and in the very beginning that almost every time they mention at some point in the first week how much they were not looking forward to doing that video and they were dreading it and that I was making them do a video and they don't like to hear themselves or they don't like to see themselves or any of those other things that we hear people say and then by the end of the first week they 
they're all responding to each other's video notes saying, oh my gosh, I've had six classes with you and this is actually the first time I've heard your voice. Um, oh my gosh, I've had every class I've ever taken, I've taken with you and it's the first time that I have actually seen you in these classes, or it's the first time that, um, you know, you talk about your puppy and now I've seen your puppy or you talk about this and now I've seen this. And so it actually is, is creating a much bigger level of engagement between your students. They're connected more deeply with each other. And that really does lead into how they engage with each other and connect with each other throughout their discussion boards and activities throughout the entire rest of the class, because they made that connection on that very first activity. They saw each other, they saw each other's space, they heard each other, they got to see facial expressions, they got to do engagements. And it works if you have somebody who has impairments and they don't get all of the same senses, they get some of them. And there's really some, some benefit in that to the whole class because they get to make that connection from the very beginning. Um, some other ways that video note is um, super awesome. Um, foreign language or speech classes, uh, especially in a world where we may be doing things virtually because um, some classes are still virtual. Some classes are online, some classes are still virtual. Um, so it's a really great, great way that students can actually give a speech and record it and post it into a discussion board. So it is just like they are giving that speech in front of the class. It's just going into the discussion board. They can do it right there in the discussion board and then other classmates can come in and they can either do video note responses like as a critique or they can ask questions uh, and really engage with what, what that speech was about. It's also really awesome for foreign language. Um, if somebody is, if it's a, a, how to speak in the language, you can actually hear them speaking, which if, especially if it's a conversations class, um, when they are leaving, go to a foreign country and they're gonna use that language, it would be great if, if they knew how to say it. Um, conjugating verbs is awesome, but we also need to know how to say the words. Um, so it really gives the faculty member an opportunity to hear the student saying the words um, and you can have them submitted either in a discussion or a Dropbox, um, either way. And then it can be private, you could use it as a part of a test, or you could have it as an open discussion where they actually communicate with each other in a foreign language right there on their discussion board. Um, and some of you have used Flipgrid for things in the past. Um, Flipgrid is not approved as a third party resource at the university. Um, so you got to be really, really, really careful with stuff like that and FERPA and terms of service. So if you are looking to have that additional level of engagement, then having video note and having threads set up within your discussion that, uh, that you require students to video note each other back and forth, you're having the similar experience as Flipgrid, but you're keeping it inside our secured environment so you don't have to worry as much about FERPA and um, security and terms of service and things like that. Sending students out and requiring them to accept the terms of service of a third party vendor can get you in trouble. Um, so this is a way to kind of keep a, an extra level of protection for you as a faculty member, because I assume that you do not want to get in trouble. That's not your goals for September. Um, so thinking about how you might be able to create some of those things that you've seen over the last couple of years, but keep it safe and secured within the D2L environment. Um, I have several other things on my little list of ways that we can use video note, but does anybody have any ideas? Of ways you might use it in your class before I go on? Or do Tara and Karen have any suggestions? <laughs> I actually just wanted to add, I did put it in chat, but you can actually use video note in your D2L email too. So mm -hmm. if you want to send a message to a student, like an email message, but it's important and you really want them to respond to you, you can actually just do it in a video note that says, hey, getting in touch, please call me about XYZ. Um, instead of typing it out. So I just wanted to put that out there too. And students have that same capability also. Um, I was thinking to remind students about assignments that are due at the end of the week. Like mm -hmm. on Wednesday, I could just put a quick video in saying, hey guys, remember 
we did da 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 and it's due on Sunday. Absolutely. I think it also works really great for that if you, um, as you're reading through student discussions, um, I don't know if you if you do that in your courses or not, but if you're reading through student discussions, I will sometimes kind of summarize the gist of what everybody said, um, and it can take you a long time to type that out, but if you can just do a quick one or two minute, hey, I looked at everybody's discussions, and these are some of the common themes, and these are some of the things that were brought up and these are some of the ideas and this is something people talked about and we're actually going to cover it in the next module or hey there's this thing uh, and this would even lead to some of the other ideas but there's this thing happening in the world right now that actually impacts the things that we were just talking about in our discussion and this is how we see this in our lives so really engaging with that in a quick way to help the students see that all of that discussion thread had purpose and meaning um, and how it can be connected to each other and back into our current world. So there's some other ways to do it. One of the other things, um, a lot of times giving feedback, doing the audio, the students mm -hmm. actually pay more attention to it. Mm -hmm. um, but having you on video talking to them, it's like a personal one-on-one, -on -one. Mm -hmm. like they're sitting in your office. And the students I found respond much better to that then if you just send them written feedback, they're like, yeah, I read it. Okay. But then the next assignment, nothing's different. They didn't yes. apply it. So I think this definitely would be an up step from just the audio to seeing you. Oh gosh. Okay. She's going to be looking at this. <laughs> so it's going to make a difference. I feel like they take it a little more seriously when they see us in there or they hear us in yes. there. And it's more than just words um, that it's an actual, they, you know, they see the, uh, they see those facial expressions, they hear the tone in your voice, they hear those things. And so it kind of makes a different connection for them. It kind of takes it to the next level. Yeah. What are some other ways y'all might use video note in your courses? I, I'll add something. Um, can you hear me? Okay. Uh -huh. Can y'all hear me? Okay. I'm, I'm in the break room and nobody's in here. So I'll just, <laughs> I'll just talk. Um, <laughs> One of the things you sort of said, introducing new modules, I could almost see a recap at the end of each module that I, I might want to do to just kind of say, okay, here are the top points. Make sure you know these. So, yes, absolutely. Thought. Yeah, that's a, that, yes, B book ending. Yes. Yeah, both ends of it are huge. Um, it really helps to recap at the end of the week. Uh, or at the end of the module before they move forward, because usually so much stuff has happened in one of our modules that if we can recap for them and give them, hey, these are the key points that you'll want to take with you moving forward, it really just gives a second opportunity or third opportunity for them to really hear those things and commit them. Uh, and if you're thinking about things in, in terms of motivation and thinking about things in terms of social cognitive well, we've taken them through some of those steps. So if we're able to get them to a point that we can add an extra layer of that engagement and connection socially, it just, it, they commit it better to memory. Similar to the recapping, if you're coming up on a midterm or other big exam, you could structure it like a Q&A, like how people on YouTube and other platforms will have their followers submit questions to them, and then they'll just make one long, or not too long, but a video responding to each of those questions, and you could use video note that way. Absolutely, and if you have longer if, if whatever it is that you're talking about is going to take a little longer you could actually do a video note per question so you could actually have the question and then a little video note and then the question a little video note um and so you could do several if that's easier than one big long one too um i think that's great having a question and answer it actually leads to one of the ones that it's one of the ways that we uh, recommend people using video note uh in there have a question ask the class or uh, the coffee break or whatever it is that you call the discussion board that you have in your class it's a place for students to come and ask questions um, that are more generic to the whole class not specific to like student grades um, if you can respond to those questions with a video note 
they're more likely to watch it, they're more likely to engage with it, and they probably have that question, but people, even if you tell them it's anonymous, are scared to post, but if you are responding in a way that makes them be like, oh, I can watch this, but nobody has to really know that I did it, they tend to be more uh, apt to get in there and take a look at those things too. So yeah, it's the same. Anytime there's questions and you can give them the answers in a video or audio format, it just takes it to another level. What are some other ways that y'all can think of? You can use video notes for test questions in QuizTool if you would like for students to hear you and see you. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Anywhere there's a dialogue box, that text box, anywhere that box exists, you can use video notes. So you can use that for a question. Um, you can use that if you are wanting to play a little game of Jeopardy in your class. Um, you can record little questions or have little video notes. Um, so there's all kinds of ways that you can embed that within your course and make it be just a little bit more I guess less correspondency, not necessarily more something, uh, but we don't want our classes to be read this, write this, read this, write this. We want our students to be engaged with each other and engaged with us. And so the more opportunities that we have to put some of those audio and video opportunities in there, the students just get a little bit more engaged with you and with each other. Um. And Denise posted a question about expanding on that. I'll, I'll say from my perspective, I can't speak for the other IDs, but I know for the faculty that have used video notes and questions, it's often to preface a question with a scenario. So they'll put the scenario that they want to talk about, whatever that is in a video note. It's always really short. And of course, it's captioned so students can still read the scenario because that's really important. Um, but they'll put in the scenario and then have the question. Um, or sometimes they'll just to increase engagement, um, they'll include the other way that I've looked at it is it's more of a short answer rather than in like an essay question, it's a short answer and they want to explain something and say give the term for instead of just again writing it because they're quick to make. And it can surprise students if they're in the middle of a quiz and they've never had a faculty person use video net before in their quiz and then all of a sudden you pop up to ask the question. Um, I know that, again, going back to what Dr. Gowan said, for some students, it could be a little unnerving, and I don't necessarily think that's bad if you're in the quiz tool, um, <laughs> but, but those are a couple of ways that I know I've worked with faculty to use them. And students can use um, video note in every one of those text and dialogue boxes that you can. Uh, so thinking about that in terms of creating those opportunities for assessment and activities in your class, anytime that you have a quiz tool that is going to have that box. So if you have a written response in a quiz, it doesn't have to be a written response. They could actually add a video note as their response, um, or they could actually uh, add video notes anywhere else in the in the course where they have that opportunity. So they could add that video note right into Dropbox, right into discussion, right into the quiz tool, right into surveys, anything that's in there that has that, you can, the students can get in and do that. Any other ideas? Um, yeah, I, I'm still not totally getting my head around this, but sure. um, so in quiz tool, instead of typing in questions, I could just ask a question on this video and then they would still have a b c and d or multi-select or whatever the case may be yes okay yes and then they could watch me ask the question as many times as they wanted to and think about it and all yes. of that. okay yes. and then yes. they could respond with a video as well instead yep. of typing i could do it that direction as well yes okay all yes right. you could yes. all right thank you oh you're welcome uh, one of the other ideas that um, are ways that you may want to think about using this with your students in your class, um, we are, it's not turned on in very many classes. I think we've gotten it basically turned off. If it's not, we've had people turn it off. Blog, the D2L blog, if you still have that in your class, turn it off because it's universal. It's not per your class. But the concept of a blog is not a bad concept. So 
students could even within their own um, because every video note is saved and then you can go back in and search for them and I can show you all how to do that in a second if you're interested in that. Um, you can actually pre record video notes and then go back and add them later. Um, but one of the things you could maybe have them do is a reflection where they video blog or, or vlog, um, but where they video blog and talk about different concepts or activities or things that have connected with them during the semester uh, or during the span of the class and how they've seen things grow and change. And what's awesome about that is that if they do that in the very beginning, um, they can see how they thought about something in the beginning and then kind of see how that thing progresses as the semester or time goes along are the things that they're learning in your class impacting that uh, and they'll be able to see it themselves typically you see that and sometimes we have a, a pre post activity within um, a lot of our courses but this is one of those ways that the student can really go in there and take a look at that and see how they have progressed with their way of understanding especially pretty deep topics um, things that are a little little more in depth to grab um, things that having the perspective of others in the class might have shaped how they see or do things um, you know really taking that opportunity they also get to see whether or not they need a haircut because they'll see it in august and then they see it again in december and we know uh, whether or not we need to take care of that um, so yeah that's one of the ones that we talk about a lot that we think is kind of a cool way to do things so any other thoughts ideas Tara, Karen, do you have any I haven't thought of? I have an idea, actually. Sure. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I have students do a personal SWOT analysis. Um, I also talk to them about a personal mission statement. And a lot of them don't know exactly how to word it. They don't know what they want to write. But giving them the option of recording it would probably free them up a little bit to be, I think, more aware of, of how they want to describe themselves and, and to be able to do that without trying to, to put that on paper. And so I think I'm going to give it a shot this time because I'd like to see what they have to say, you know, as opposed yeah. to typing it, how, you know, what, what is your mission? What is your personal mission statement? And see if they give me more than what I've been getting off of that typed document. So it's a thought anyway to see what they come up with. Yeah, absolutely. I'd love to hear how that goes too, because yeah. it sounds like it's something that would really engage them a little bit deeper um, and yeah. give them that Make opportunity. Think a little more. I also have like a section in my discussion area a forum that's notes from your professor's desk, and I can do little short video notes of things, just things like um, I'm very, I hate the word myself. <laughs> I detest it. And so one of the things that I said to my remote class the other day was, I want you to remove the word myself from your vocabulary. I don't want to hear it, see it, read it, because you don't know what it is. It's a reflexive pronoun. And if I ever see it in your writing, it's a zero. And I'm very vehement about it when I say it. And so I'm, I need to do little things like that for the classes that are 100% online so they can understand why I hate the word myself. And why I hate hearing things on the news like he was shot in the driveway. And I look at my students and I go, where on your body is the driveway? Mm -hmm. You know, I, I mean, there is I was not in biology for a very long time, but I don't remember there being a driveway on your person. Um, I think there's some words missing there. How about you guys? You think there are words missing? And they look at me like, what the heck? And I'm like, he was standing in the driveway when he was shot. That makes sense. But he was shot in the driveway makes no sense. Think about what you're saying. I teach business communication. So it's, I'm always like, you know, these things. And I told them it's like fingernails on the chalkboard. And I went, never mind. You have no clue what that yeah, means. Don't know. <laughs> but but it's, it's very awful. Let me just say that. So, so yeah, that's a couple of ideas I have for I also feel like we all now need to collect all those opportunities and examples that we see of those things and send them to you as additional oh, examples. Yes, I, I will put them in, in my, yeah, 
because that, that definitely drives me crazy. <laughs> that myself thing is like number one on my list. Hate it. Send something to my secretary or myself. I'm like, who is myself? You know, I just want to yell at the TV. Well, I do yell at the TV when I hear that. I'm like, stop it with the word. How did this get in our common day? You know, and the newest one lately, that being said, I just want to swap. Do you not know transitional words? That being said in writing is not one of them, you know? So yeah, I'm having nervous breakdown, I think over the, the whole change in, in language or something. So sorry, I got off on a tangent. No, it's a good tangent. Is this the time we should bring up <laughs> irregardless? Oh yeah, this is the time. We, I have this long list I share with my students things I have learned being a college professor that students should not say <laughs> or write and I hand it out to them and go read it so yeah I think that's great and those are some great ways to use video note because I think you really will be able to engage with your student and really get the meaning across uh, and what it is that you want them to get from that so those are great examples of video note oh uh, yeah they should be able to tell by the voice and the face. i mean i will make sure to never use myself in anything yeah. i send to you i'd say throw it out <laughs> throw it out unless you bought the car yourself and you want to say i paid for the car myself that's the only time you should use it so <laughs> i'm just you that's know awesome. it makes me nutty so i know there are other uses for it but not the way that it's been abused poor word it's just sad so I'll let y'all talk now. <laughs> You're good. What other examples does anybody have of ways to use video note? We've got um, a couple more minutes um, in here and then I was gonna screen share again really fast um, and show y'all how to search for video notes in case you want to add one in that you recorded previously. Um, so does anybody have any other um, examples of ways you might use video note? Oh. I'll add one from our student perspective. Yes. Um, using video notes, having students find their own articles and or resources, and then posting that article instead of typing a summary, have them do a video note summary of the article. So then students can respond, ask additional follow-up questions, et cetera. That way they're hopefully finding good resources, or at least you learn if they're finding good resources. <laughs> um, and then and if they're really summarizing them in the way that they, they should be summarized. <clears throat> so that's another little one. I think that's a great one. It's how we find out whether or not they're actually connecting with the material or just telling you what the sentences in the abstract said. Uh, like, are you actually getting the information? Uh, is it actually connecting with what we talked about in the class or what it was you were supposed to be doing? You get to see and hear them making that connection. And I think it's a great example. Okay, I'm going to share the screen one more time um, really fast and show y'all how to search for a video note. So we're going to go into um, another, uh, we'll just go into this discussion board so that I can show you how to search for one. Clearly, I use this frequently to uh, create example video notes. Um, so we're actually just going to start a new thread. Um, and I am going to go into my insert stuff um, down here in this one, and it's the exact same way as how you created one, but you go down to where it says video notes search, and then the video notes that you have, if you remember the name that you gave it, good job. Um, I never remember what I named things, so I just hit the generic search. Um, and then it gives you um, all of these ones that you can add in there. Um, so, and I, if y'all notice, you can see my hairstyle change uh, throughout the progression of my video notes. Um, so this one is one of the ones we were joking about earlier. We were talking about motivation because it's such an awesome example of facial expressions. So you click on the one that you want. It actually will highlight um, and then you click next and you can decide if you want to um, insert this one, if this is one that you really meant by pushing the play. And then you see, right, my great facial expression. So, <laughs> and me having technical issues earlier. And so you could see my facial expressions as the computer was winning. Um, and so all you do is hit insert it pops it right into that box 
and then you hit post and it is now right there. It is now right there. It is available. Um, and it's one that I had previously recorded. So what's great about that is if um, you are wanting to do a video note um, in a class or you have two or three classes that uh, you teach the same topics and concepts and you want to drop the same video note in instead of re-recording that video note, you can just go in and do that video note search and that will allow you to put that one in in multiple locations or multiple courses. You can do it over the span of time. You can come back next year and drop the same ones in if you want. Um, if you're using a development shell, you, it will actually move um, your video notes. So you want to check and make sure they're still current. Um, so that's the, the one thing too about video notes, because they're so quick and easy. Um, you don't feel as guilty if you record over things or redo them because you didn't spend hours and hours and hours trying to create them. You spent whatever the span of time was that you recorded. So it's really fast and um, it's really quick. And, and we say this in instructional design a lot about anything that you're producing is it, it doesn't have to be overly produced. It doesn't have to be done in a studio. It doesn't have to be expert. It really is important that the students see you as you. Uh, and they connect with you as the person. And if it's too overproduced, they have a harder time connecting with you. It also kind of creates a little anxiety for them. Um, if yours are perfect and you are asking them to per put a video into something, they feel like everything has to be perfect. And very few things in our world are perfect. Um, I don't, don't, I can't think of any. Um, so being aware that it's okay if they see little mistakes or little blips um, or you forget a word and you have to go back and say something over again. In a video note, if it's near the beginning, go ahead and re-record it. But if it's not, then don't worry about it. If you were in a live class and you sneezed, would you start your lecture over? Probably not. Um, so don't feel like that you have to be that rigid in your video recordings either be who you are and let your students connect with you um, and the type of person and personality that you have that's part of what they get from these is they see your passion they hear your passion they get a greater connection with this concept and this topic that you clearly love and believe in or you wouldn't be teaching it having that opportunity for them to hear you talking about things really takes it to that next level for them. They have a greater connection with your course. They have a greater connection with you and they have a greater connection with each other. And that's all I have for that. Does anybody have any additional questions before we go? Or I was just going to say you? anecdotally too, to drop in on that. I use video notes when I'm teaching as mid-semester check-ins and I recorded my mid-semester check-in in one of my favorite places in the world, which is my own personal screen porch at my home. Um, and I recorded it there. And I actually did have students specifically talk about that they liked seeing part of my house. And, you know, it was just the screen porch, but it, it made me more human, less computer. Yeah. Anybody else? Right, Tara is so right, you're right, she is. That's an all-encompassing statement, but yes, <laughs> she is. All right, does anybody have any other questions or need anything? Um, if not, I'm gonna go ahead and turn off our recording um, and we'll stay around for a little bit in case anybody has any additional questions that you didn't want to ask on the recording. So, But we're so glad that y'all could join us today and we hope that y'all have a great rest of your week um, and let us know if you ever need anything. Thanks.